when, when you're you're migrating data around in Azure DevOps, there are a hundred thousand things that can go wrong. Uh, there's some really big things that people run into. Um, if you're using the Azure DevOps data migration service um, that Microsoft provides to take your whole collection up, um, big things are we're on an older version of TFS that's not supported. That's one. Um, I, I did one recently and discovered during the, the discovery that the customer still had Visual Source Safe, right? So we had to do a Visual Source Safe import first. Visual Source Safe, I think, went end of life in 2005, maybe? 2005? So it was stuff that had been around for a long time. Um, so we had to bring that in first and then, because if you don't bring it in first and you try and upgrade your TFS first, um, the VSS import is on, was only supported up to TFS 2015, because after that, it's 10 years after VSS was end of life. So Microsoft stopped having that functionality in TFS. So if you don't bring it in before that, you can't bring it in not with full history and all of the, the, the things, they discontinued those tools. So you that one of the most common issues that people run into when they're doing migrations is doing things in the wrong order. Um, and that's over a variety of different contexts. If you push up to Azure DevOps and you've done things in the wrong order, uh, you might not want to do process template changes. You wanna do them on-prem before you push them up. You might want to bring in other source control stuff. You need to do that before you take it up. Um, you might want to move from TFVC, Team Foundation version control, to Git. You probably want to do that before you move up, but you can probably get away with it. That one you can probably get away with. Um, but if you, <laughs> the, the probably the biggest one, this is the one that's, um, there's, there's absolutely no way back from. Well, I guess the VSS stuff as well, but the one that there's absolutely no way back from is 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 account account alignment. <laughs> okay, this is this is just uh, uh, mental. So the way TFS does identity is TFS has an identity and it wraps whatever the actual identity is. So in the old days, this was either a work group account. If you're familiar with Windows authentication it's either a work group account or it was an active directory account right so the issue is that if you take a work group and then move it into a domain joined environment and convert it to a domain joined but the accounts don't match up right so tfs will automatically when you move between environments it will try and find the account that matches the one that already exists and just swap out the the bit inside of the tfs identity but if it can't find it, it and it's already added to the systems, it will create a new identity. So you'll end up with two TFS identities. So if you've got Bob in your company and Bob has the old TFS identity and the new TFS identity, when he logs into TFS and he searches for show me all work that's assigned to me, he won't find anything because it's assigned to old Bob, not new Bob. Old identity Bob, not new identity Bob. Um, and that's an order of operations issue. Um, and it's really hard in Active Directory and Azure Active Directory because quite often there's groups and things that, that add people into services before you want them to be added and then you end up with this problem. So Azure DevOps kind of combats that a little bit that when you move stuff around, because even, even once you're in Azure DevOps, you can move from tenant A to tenant B, right? Um, so you're... Microsoft intra tenant identity management can be swapped out and it does the same thing, right? But it's going to ask you, here's a list of all the users that we couldn't match up. Do you want to match them up? And if you click that skip button at the bottom, which if you have somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, people are apt to do. I, I find so many times things go wrong because people click the skip button because they think they know what it says or they don't care what it says or they just want to do it or it's not their job or whatever reason. And there is no way going back to the old way because now you've got those both those identities exist and there's no way to merge those identities. So if you want everything to align, 
uh, uh, through through your upgrade process, then all of those things need to be taken into account. Probably the absolute worst case of that having to be managed um, was years ago, I Microsoft sold a part of their business to another company. So we had to get it. We had to get all of this work, right? The, the TFS environment from inside of Microsoft to inside of this other company. But as you can imagine with, with, with legal and compliance and all kinds of things, it wasn't that easy. And when you work within a company, you take dependencies on lots of things that maybe your company owns, but then you sell this thing and you're not selling these things that you're taking a dependency on. So how do you, how do you get it out? So I think we had seven, I think we had seven migrations that we had to do with this single environment. Um, so there was, there was three outgoing, one outside neither environment and then three incoming into the new company. And at each of those levels, there was different validation, different scripts, different things that had to be run against those environments to ensure that we don't lose anything and we don't get anything we're not supposed to and all of those kind of things. And it was an absolutely horrendous nightmare of convoluted legalese, right? To get it, to get it all done. Um, but the, the biggest issue was that I, maintaining those identities all the way through because the people were going as well and they wanted all of the identities to match up on the other side. So you have to ensure that you map all of the identities correctly all the way through um, so that when you get to the other side, people open it up and go, oh, there's all my stuff rather than, oh, where's all my stuff gone, right? And then they have to go find it and they have to go create custom queries and all kinds of stuff to, to, to it's just a pain in the butt. Um, so those are some of the some of the bad things that can happen identity management that's that's there's a lot of gotchas in there um uh, database size move, moving up to azure devops the size of the database and what's in there and how you clean it up that's there's a bunch of gotchas in there if your company which you should know developers are apt to do um you might find that your tfs environment has been around for a really long time and it didn't used to be run by your operations team with control, right? It maybe used to be run by the developers before it was handed off to operations, before they knew that. In the old days, operations often thought that anything that developers did was non-production, right? Even though all the code is an organizational asset and we're storing it in there, the build environments and build agents are all organizational assets because we can't deliver our product if we don't have it they were all considered not production so developers could have the keys to everything and do everything i've worked for so many companies like that um and the problem is that because they can do whatever they want they go oh there's the new beta version of tfs oh it's supported by microsoft so we'll install that but it's mostly supported by microsoft right so i've had environments where it's a major enterprise company, but in the mists of time of that environment, it's had a beta version of TFS deployed that was maybe supported, right? Way back in 10 years ago. Um, but it causes knock-on errors because there were a couple of things that weren't taken care of that mean it can function the way it is, but it ain't going to Azure DevOps without fixing all of those things. So um, there's those types of things. If your server's old enough, there's all sorts of, buggy ass things from TFS 2010 that they fixed in 2012 that if your server's old enough to have been in 2010 and uses TFVC, the Team Foundation version, oh, oh, there's just a whole nightmare of stuff left over that you have to go you have to go fix you have to go fix it before you can go to the go to the cloud. So that's uh, you can have half committed stuff um because you had to do two commits back in the day to do a rename, but nobody told anybody and there was no error message. So in service pack one, they brought in the error message and then in 2012, they fixed it, but there's still a bunch of stuff in there um, that's that's messed up. Oh, there's, there's so many, if you if, imagine a product that's been around for eight, 18 years, no, not quite 18 years, 16, where are we? It was, it was created in 2005, shipped in 2006. 
Man, that's a long time, right? Nearly 20, nearly two years off 20, 18, 18 years, right? My math sucks. 18 years of engineering work has gone into this product. 18 years of different people working on it. 18 years of forgotten stuff. 18 years of bodies being buried underneath uh, uh, some of the, the classes and methods. And the stuff, the stuff that doesn't work the way you want it to. So those are probably where the biggest uh, difficulties are. Um, the easy stuff, the stuff that can go right, man, I, it, like, I did mention the, the migration up to Azure DevOps. And this was really early on in Azure DevOps that took, um, took less than an hour. I mean, this, this was a, a government agency in the UK. Um, I was a council, so not government, government, but local government. And we, we, we ran the, we installed the latest version of TFS. Um, everything went fine. We ran the tool against it. It said everything was good. So the database was, I think, a few, a, f a couple of gig, tiny. So we just sequenced the DAC pack, did a dry run up into Azure DevOps. That took about 15 minutes to less than 15 minutes. And it was there. They looked at the dry run. They thought, oh, th this looks awesome. This is perfect. Everything's where it's supposed to be. We see all the stuff. Uh, we, we trust Microsoft to throw an error if, right? So they were just reasonable reasonable folks um so we just went okay well do you want to just do the production one then or do you want to wait and validate it some more and they're like no just just run the production one so we run the production one and we're done turn off tfs that's that's one headache off their plate one headache off um their 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 local admins plate oh hold on Ooh, we need to we need to go back to what's the worst the absolute most appalling issue with tfs slash azure devops server so running it on-prem especially if you're if your developers are running it this will be done right if your operations team's running it i guarantee you it's wrong and that's backup so most operations teams want to use their standardized tools so they just see a sql server and they want to plug their standard backup tool into Azure DevOps and suck out the data, store it, tape, offsite, right? If they're doing that, that does not guarantee a restore. The problem with systems like TFS, it's not really a problem with TFS, it's a problem with having people that don't know what they're doing running it or that don't care running it right um it's actually the same issue is for sharepoint and a lot of other systems but you have multiple data physical databases inside of the system right so when it runs updates you could have an update that straddles multiple databases so in tfs's case you've got a configuration database and then you've got a bunch of collection databases so you can have like an identity update, for example, will hit the collection and the configuration database. And the configuration database is small, so that bit will be done really quickly. And then it needs to complete on the, um, the other one, but they run it as a transaction. It's absolutely possible to the point in time of your backup that it's completed and committed on one database and not completed on the other one. So we'll roll back because the transaction has across multiple databases and this one's finished and it's moving on to this one. And the transaction allows you to roll back the whole thing, but not if you restore a backup without that transaction being in its existence, right? Mid the transaction. So there are things that you're supposed to do that are all documented by Microsoft to enable you to do marked transaction logs. So you actually put a mark, you, you use the transaction system to put a mark across, uh, uh, like a bookmark across all of the databases. And then you back, so it, it, the transaction completes, all of the other transactions are completed, this transaction completes and 
has this mark and it might be at different timestamps across the different databases, right? And then you back up that mark. And then when you restore that mark, it's exactly the right point. But most people don't do that. And they validate things by, we'll do a trial restore. It's totally possible that that restore will work. Probably in most circumstances, that restore will work. But you know what Murphy says. What's If the worst thing could happen, it will happen at the worst possible time, right? So in an actual disaster, when you need to recover your database, that's the time when you'll hit that transaction log. And if you hit that, you are not going to be able to restore your databases and you're going to have to call up Microsoft and they're going to have to have an engineer log into your servers and run scripts to fix the databases. And then because they've run scripts to fix the databases, that's another thing that can end up being a future problem when you go to move to Azure DevOps um, and something in the database is not quite right when they do the validation and, and it fails the, the, the import. So um, and my advice is never ever let an operations team run TFS. That's, that's, that's my advice. If you have to let an operations team run TFS, um, ensure that they must use the TFS documented backup procedures, not their own stuff that won't work and might end up with, with you in the, in the hole. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the big one. 90% of the time things go perfectly fine, right? Upgrading TFS, super easy. It used to be an absolute nightmare but the Azure DevOps team did a bunch of work to validate everything, check everything, and that's part of their ethos, right? So if you run it, it will tell you, here's a problem, here's how you fix it. You fix it, it runs, and it runs. You can do the upgrades. Totally cool. They're super easy. But when something isn't right, that's when you need that, that expertise um, to go, what is the problem? How do I fix it? Where does it come from? Their documentation's awesome, but there's still those, those things that slip through the cracks. So that that's really the things that there's a lot of things that can go wrong and a lot of things that can go wrong that are really important. But 99.9% .9 of the time, everything's going to be fine. Um, you're going to be able to upgrade, you're going to be able to migrate and everything's going to, going to go, go great.